Hi everyone, my name is Trevor Jones and this is the Astro Backyard. In this video, I'm gonna take an amazing picture of a galaxy using my telescope in just one hour. The rules are simple. I can get everything ready beforehand, but I only have one hour to actually take the image. The clock starts as soon as the first exposure is started and whatever I get in that time is what I get. My total exposure time on this image will actually be less than an hour, especially if I start fiddling with the focus in between shots. This is just for fun, so please be kind when you see the final image. Okay, let's get into it. What's the score? No, them. Oh, nice. What do you think, buddy? Oilers and seven, dad called it. For many of you, I know that your window of imaging time is limited. So I wanna show you what's possible in an hour with the right approach. Now, an hour of imaging time under a dark moonless sky is one thing, but tonight we've got a nearly full moon and I'm here in my Bortle 6 backyard. However, I'm gonna use some strategies to overcome this, like shooting before the moon comes up and well away from that area of the sky. I'll also point my telescope towards the dark section of my backyard sky, the west, to give myself a better shot at a decent image. This really narrowed down my target choices, especially because all the really cool stuff is rising in the east right now. I really wanted to shoot the Dumbbell Nebula. While I do have some major setbacks in terms of of moonlight and light pollution, I have an ace up my sleeve. One of the best ways to maximize limited clear sky time is to use a telescope with fast optics. And tonight I'm using a giant light bucket with a focal ratio of F3. That's right, an F4 reflector turned F3 with a Starazona reducer. I realize this isn't your ordinary backyard telescope, but this guy has been sitting under a tarp for a month and I've been dying to use it. I call this the difference maker. The difference maker. A telescope that can collect as much light in an hour as a regular one can in four. Some other things I can do to help my case are choosing an object with a decent magnitude or brightness and looking at what others have captured in a similar amount of time. Stellarium gives me all of the details I need to pick the target and Astrobin provides real world results for me to base my decision on. I also need to keep that nearly full moon in mind and it rises at midnight. This makes my ideal imaging window between about 10.45 and 11.45 p.m. Early enough to get ahead of the moon, but just after astronomical darkness has set in. Okay, now for the target. I ended up choosing the Whale Galaxy for several reasons, one of them being that I just think it looks really cool. A globular cluster would have been a great choice for a challenge like this, but I mean, come on. Using Stellarium with my backyard sky overlay, I started by filtering objects that are a magnitude 10 or brighter. Then I narrowed down my search to an area of the sky that is darkest from my backyard. Because this is in the west, this provided a bunch of targets that are pretty well out of season because, you know, they're on their way out and not exactly a nebula heavy area of the sky either. This challenge would have been great in August, but there were a few noteworthy targets in this sweet spot. When I found a potential candidate, I would cross cross-reference the target in Astrobin. I can look up several examples of the target and see just how many hours of integration the photographer used to create their image. Some of the really cool galaxies I wanted to try that I've never done before had integrations of over 25 hours, which is not a great sign for a project like this. For example, the Waterbug Galaxy at a magnitude 12 would be really setting myself up for disappointment in an hour. Part of being ready to rock with a telescope like this means collimation. I need to make sure that the optics are well aligned before I take that first shot. I use a laser collimator that I bought on Amazon and it seems to be working well. Someone brought up the idea of my alignment tool being out of alignment itself in the comments of a recent video. One headache at a time. I believe that I got a good one. The process itself is dead easy and thankfully, I can do it in the daytime. The telescope mount I'm using is already polar aligned with the North Celestial Pole. I can skip right over that step and hit the ground running as soon as it gets dark out. And because I've had this telescope sitting out here under a tarp since I first set it up, I know that it's already balanced as well. Those 365 covers are so handy. 
the poor man's observatory. The gear itself is pretty similar to the kit I used about a month ago to photograph the Whirlpool Galaxy. The camera is an ASI 294MC Pro, a one-shot color dedicated astronomy camera, and I have an Optolong L Quad Enhance light pollution filter in front of it. The telescope itself is a Skywatcher Quattro 300P, a fast imaging Newtonian with a large 12 inch mirror. With the Starazona Nexus reducer in place, it shoots at a focal length of 900 millimeters at F3. The mount is a Skywatcher EQ8, the only mount I have that can handle this bohemia. In my last video with this telescope, I had some people mention that they didn't believe I was able to capture the image that I did in the amount of time that I listed. But you need to remember how much of a difference a large aperture makes. Think of how much more light this telescope collects in a single shot than even a 150 millimeter refractor. It's not just 900 millimeters at F3, it's 900 millimeters with a 12 inch aperture. Okay, it's almost time to get started and I need to focus. I mean, literally, I need to focus the telescope. When that first exposure begins, I'll start the clock. With auto-guiding and dithering, I think I can squeeze in 15 three-minute shots within that one-hour window. After my session, I'll take some calibration frames, darks, bias, and flats. Since these can be taken during the day in the house, I'm not considering these part of that one-hour imaging window. I think that's fair. Okay, wish me luck. Just going through the data I collected now and I'm ready to stack the images. I can use the timestamp on the files to see exactly when I hit that one hour mark for the images. So the first sub exposure here looks like it's an hour off. I started at 1042, not 942. So from 1042 to 1141, I got 20 sub exposures of three minutes each. So I'm a little confused as to how I was able to collect a full hour's worth of exposure time because I had dithering turned on in the camera settings. I have the files open up here in Blink and if we play them, you can even see the shift that's happening between each subframe. So usually dithering takes a second or two, so either way, 20 subs within an hour, I'm not sure how that's possible. Regardless, I will use all 20 of these subs to help my final image of the whale galaxy. I'll be using WBPP here in Pixinsight to stack the data with those calibration frames that I took. <laughs> 